Well, hello. Episode three of My Life as a Critic. I'm a professional film critic, Sean Patrick. Um, thank you, uh, first of all, to everybody who's listened to the uh, first episodes of this. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is a, a strange project for me. I've never done anything like this. So it's nice to have a few people just say kind things. Uh, and uh, one thumbs up for my videos. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate for the for the uh, Red Riding Hood. I, I appreciate that. Uh, so we're looking back at movie reviews that I've written in uh, written in 16 years of being a uh, professional film critic. Well, I mean, I was a professional. I guess professionalism is not uh, not something easily bestowed. Uh, I wasn't a professional critic in 2000 when I got my start. Uh, I was uh, I was an amateur writing on the internet, just like. Uh, thousands of other people at the time. Uh, professionalism, I guess when it comes to being a professional critic, uh, I since about 2010, I would say, as a member of the Broadcast Film Critics Association, uh, my reviews are heard on 12 radio stations, which is, uh, you know, in this day and age, in this modern media with so many film critics losing their jobs, I mean, it's. I think it's, an, I'm, I'm impressed with my own achievement. I guess if anybody else is, I don't really know. I don't care, uh, but I, I have a professional accreditation with the credit, with the film, with the broadcast film critics. So that I'm I'm professional film critic is not uh, not something I apply lightly. I I have earned it over a number of years, and so professional film critic Sean Patrick, as pretentious as that might sound, that's how I feel. I'm a film critic professionally. It's part of what I do. Uh, in this series, if you've been listening along, we're, I'm looking at things I wrote or have done on the radio over the years and uh, trying to take a second look at them and look back and see how I've changed or how my opinions have changed, how my professionalism, for that matter, has changed over time and uh, whether or not it's affected the way I see that same movie. And uh, last time I just picked one at random. Uh, well, I'm always going to pick them at random, pretty much. But <laughs> uh, I found my old MySpace blogs, and I had a review of Red Riding Hood with Amanda Seyfried from 2011. I thought, let's start there. Why not? Well, it's just the first one I found. And this is a pretty random project to begin with, so we went with that one. This time I, I made a, a conscious effort to look really backwards. And uh, I can't say that this is actually the first review I ever I ever wrote, but uh, it's an early one. It was uh, the I had to go to archive.org to actually find this because the website that I was writing for at the time no longer exists. Uh, it was called bicket.com, B-I-K-K-I-T. It was uh, started by a couple guys who in New York, uh, friend, longtime friends in New York, and how I found them, they found me. I have no idea, really no clue, but. Uh, Roy Opachinsky and uh, Sean Keeley were their names. They gave me my start. They're the reason why I was able to write on the internet. I, I had a my own blog and whatnot uh, in the early days of the internet. Uh, that was you know basically read by my mom, and <laughs> then uh, those were my first things that I wrote, which are long gone. I have no idea. I, I could never. I don't think I could ever get those back. But uh, Bickett was the first place I was able to write where people were able to read it. And, you know, I was able to actually get, I got page views, you know, I got plenty of page views. I was, you know, it was exciting. <laughs> and, uh, and so I decided I, well, there's this website, archive.org, and uh, they've actually got some pages from Bicket that are saved. Uh, some of those reviews are gone, but uh, there are a few that are still around. And I thought, well, let's, let's, uh, let's go there. And, I found one that, uh, according to the timestamp, is 2001, uh, around November of 2001, I would say, is when the, I wrote this, a very short review of a horror film called Boogeyman. And this was back at that time when Wes Craven was kind of slapping his name on anything. Uh, he, would just, he would just happily put his name on your movie uh, for whatever reason. Uh Chris, uh, a legend and a, a past legend. Uh, sad to see him go. One of the phenomenal horror film directors of all time. But back in the early 2000s, he was willing to slap his name, his imprimatur, on just anything. And Boogeyman was one of those. So I'm going to read you the review that I wrote in 2011 
I'm going to watch the movie again and uh, uh, hopefully in a more mature fashion uh, give you a better sense of that film. Uh, and so, <laughs> the, and again, we're re I'm reading this to you as I wrote it at the time and uh, the errors and the what I'm, wrong words, whatever, right? I just... the. This could be very embarrassing for me. That's part of the fun of this. Part of the, the, the tightrope walk that I'm on on this project is just kind of looking at myself in a very, uh, in a very critical manner, which is kind of, <laughs> I'm a critic looking at myself and my own work in a critical fashion. And uh, so that's, that's uh, here it is, me reading my review of uh, Boogeyman from 2001. A warning to horror film fans. Avoid the new DVD Boogeyman. Boogeymen. The disc is positioned as a sort of documentary retrospective of the horror genre's best. Yet Boogeyman plays more like the kind of promo disc you would receive with your subscription to Fangoria. All the horror greats are on the disc, from Norman Bates to Hellraiser's Pinhead to the greatest of them all, Freddy Krueger. They're all featured on the disc, but in a strange little vignettes that introduce the characters as if they were contestants on the dating game. For example, clips of Freddy are introduced with a picture of vital stats and tidbits like Son of a Hundred Maniacs, killed by the parents of Elm Street children, now returns to kill in children's dreams. All that's missing is Wink Martindale saying, ladies and gentlemen, about a warm welcome for Freddy Krueger. The disc is filled with famous clips like Freddy's first kill and the Phantasm Ball, but the clips are very long and are accompanied by no commentary, no interviews, essentially no insight into the making of these classics. The DVD extras does include a commentary and a couple of interviews, but why are they the, only in the extras and not in the documentary itself? If you're looking for real insight into the making of a horror film, rent Wes Craven's New Nightmare with the commentary by Craven himself and leave Boogeyman on the shelf. All right, well, I, I, there's no real reason to look back at this. It's actually, I, I reviewed a promo disc, apparently. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll take a look on YouTube and see if this is available. And I don't, but there's nothing really here to, I don't even know why I did this episode. Uh, no, but this, I guess it's because it's one of the first things I ever wrote. And uh, I guess it's a fair review, but there's nothing really to be taken away from that, is there? It was a, I, I reviewed a promo disc. Uh, a documentary, essentially, on horror film greats. Uh, I, I'll, I'll take a look and see if there's uh, worth looking at, but I may have just thrown away an entire episode here. Uh, <laughs> but I, I mean, my writing was concise, you know, and uh, and critical. Uh, apparently, I had a star system at the time, so it was a three out of ten stars on uh, Bickett.com. But uh, <laughs> Boogeyman, uh, we'll be right back. The Killer Compilation, featuring the most inhuman, grotesque, demonic, psychotic monsters ever to appear on film. All in one insane collection. Boogeyman. was that well it's on youtube uh boogie men uh and, and i how did they i mean what <laughs> uh, maybe it's a new line thing i don't know boogie men is essentially a promo disc um and apparently in in 2001 i reviewed this promo disc uh, that is basically just a series of horror movie scenes that were sold in stores to uh, people to I, for what why why anyone would want this I don't know. Uh, you get to watch Freddy's first kill in its entirety, but no insight. They don't talk to Wes Craven and ask him about it. They just show the scene. Uh, <laughs> I get they're they're a little like uh, interstitials, like written copy, I guess, uh, talking about the character. Um, 
at least in the Freddy sequence there is. I'm sure it's probably throughout the film. I didn't watch the whole thing because it's a promo disc and not a movie. <laughs> but I, this is what I, I guess this is what I thought online criticism was at the time, was you just grab whatever you can and review it. And I'm, I can remember kind of being an angry kid uh, and at the time. And, uh, you know, I, probably, I was probably pissed off. I got boogeymen and thinking, you know, oh, this will be a horror movie documentary and I'll learn some insightful things about Hellraiser and Freddy and Psycho. And then I watched this and it's just... Like what? This is just a series of scenes. It's a, it's a cash in. It's a cash grab. And you know that's that's pretty much what I put in the review. So it was a concise review, more of a, more of a product advisory than than, than actual film criticism. But yeah, I mean it's uh, it was concise. <laughs> <laughs> if you do want to see Boogeyman, the whole thing is in pieces on YouTube. So uh, obviously there's no reason to buy it, although it might be sitting at the bottom of a bargain bin somewhere in some store, uh, fooling people into thinking it's some kind of insightful horror film documentary. It's not. <laughs> so there you go. That is uh, episode three. I want to again uh, shout out uh, to Bickett.com. And we'll, we'll be talking about Bickett a lot uh, on this show because uh, it's where I got my start. Uh, also, GuessTheGross.com, which is what Bickett eventually became. And uh, thanks to uh, Roy and Sean who uh, discovered me uh, and, and put me on the path to where I am now. I, w- I would not be here without these two guys from New York who I've never met in person who uh, met me on the internet and said, "Hey, this guy can, this guy can kind of write. <laughs> he, he can put a couple sentences together." So thanks, guys. And uh, this episode is uh, dedicated to, uh, to the two of you, and uh, uh, as is part of the series. Uh, thank you, and uh, uh, back with the next episode in a couple days. <laughs>